We're on call. We have you surrounded. We are the media. <laughs> Not escape. The media has you completely surrounded. Do as they say. Answer all questions. Thank you. Somebody made light of the media crush around Ron Paul, but to the presidential candidate, it was no laughing matter. Good evening. I'm Jim Browdy. I'm live from San, An and San Anselm, the Institute of Politics, NECN Republican primary headquarters. This is the media mob you're looking at that greeted Ron Pearl, er Pearl uh, earlier today when he showed up to greet diners at a restaurant in Manchester. Is this the price of success? I'm joined by the man who's number two of the polls in New Hampshire, came in third in Iowa. That, of course, is Texas Congressman Ron Paul. Pleasure to see you. Thank you. Nice to be with you. So why'd you leave this place earlier? <laughs> what was the deal? Why'd you leave? <laughs> well, there was, there was no purpose in staying because we were just getting bumped around. And uh, a few others on other stations said it was a media mob. <laughs> you yeah, know? But do you find it weird that I have heard you repeatedly, and I totally agree with you, yeah. that for a guy who was second or third in the polls for months getting virtually no press attention, and now you're getting the press attention you deserve, and you leave a seat, you had 100 voters in there. I mean, seriously, isn't that yeah, a but problem? It, but it wasn't really serious. It was just, it was just un, uncontrollable. It was, out of, it was out of control. And actually, I thought some people would get hurt. I mean, it was like this, and people got bumped. My wife got bumped and pushed a little bit. But it was just, just the atmosphere wasn't good and wasn't even safe. I I'll, think give the, <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> I'll give you room. I'll give you You're 76 years old. A poll coming out in the New York Times, an, an entrance poll in Iowa, said 48% of people under 30 30 years old voted for the oldest man in the race. Why did they vote for you? Because they know about young ideas and energetic ideas and people who uh, know what I'm all about. I'm thinking about the young people because they're inheriting this mess that our generation's leaving them and it's, it's a lot of war, a lot of spending, a lot of debt, invasion of their privacy. Right now they feel threatened about the invasion of their internet and uh, the views I have are very attractive to young people. Let's go to the under, other end of life, people who are older, senior citizens. Uh, Medicare, Social Security, every poll shows the two most popular programs in America. You think they're both unconstitutional, correct? Yeah, technically. So should we end them? Technically they are. I think the Federal Reserve is unconstitutional, but I'm not calling for the ending right now. I want to have a transition and work our way out. Matter of fact, my program is the only one that deals with it. You know, I have a budget uh, uh, proposal. Trillion dollars trillion in dollar. year one. But if you look at it, I don't cut any Social Security, any Medicare, any Medicaid for the children. I say cut overseas spending, spend that money back here on our needs, and then work our way out of this. But I do not want to address it. Now, if we don't cut back and balance our budget and get order, and we keep printing money to cover a $1.5 trillion debt, the money will quit working, and these people are going to be out in the street. Just think, I'm the only one that talks to the elderly who are getting squeezed. Their income is going down because the value of the dollar is going down, their standard of living is going down, and they understand this. So I get good a good reception. But you think it's crowd. unconstitutional. Very briefly here, uh, Rick Santorum says we should be cutting Social Security benefits immediately. He doesn't think it's unconstitutional. Yeah. Should we? No, and I just argued my case for not Even doing though it's unconstitutional. If something's well, unconstitutional, but the federal, you shouldn't be cutting it? Yeah, but, but uh, if you can, you should work it out in a proper way. I think war is unconstitutional, and that's a bigger issue for me. But Stop. you'd like that to end right away. Yes, but I think it's it's better. There's going to, why should now Santorum won't cut a penny from overseas, but he'll go after Social Security beneficiaries. It's priorities, and but be, but if we continue to do this, everybody loses. And I think people who know me understand exactly what I'm talking about. Congressman, every uh, not everybody, a lot of people question your electability. I'm not going to question that. I'm going to cover question your ability to govern. Mitt, uh, Newt Gingrich coming out of Iowa said 75 percent of people aren't supporting Mitt Romney. He also could have said, I'll say, 80 percent of people right now are not supporting you. Virtually no one in Congress supports your approach to spending and those sort of things, even if it's the perfectly right one. How do you implement any of this stuff, even if you happen to end up being president of the United States? Well, a measurement of people in Washington is not a very good measurement. I'm talking but about. they got to vote on what you want. They got to vote to I, cut a trillion I know, dollars but in we're the budget. Gonna, we're, if I'm elected president, which we plan to do, we're going to get a lot of new people. But with my election, then the people are going to say, we elected his program. They can put pressure on the people who are there because most of them there don't have strong beliefs. And if they think they have to stay in, to stay in office, they have to come my way. But it, they'll be forced into doing it. The American people, for instance, now, 70% think we ought to be home from Afghanistan. And yet the leadership on Republicans and Democrats don't indicate one minute about coming home from Afghanistan. You said 70%. A number slightly lower, but a majority also 
or pro-choice in this country. You say it's the most important challenge of our time. Explain to me how a person who is the country's leading libertarian, who believes that government should stay out of our houses, our pocketbooks, or whatever, believes that government should outlaw abortion. I don't get it. Well, you, you probably don't see life as I do, because I believe in giving the unborn the right to life, because they're, they're persons, they're legal, they have legal rights. If I hurt them as a physician, I can get sued. So I want them to have a choice too. But it's a difficult subject. Under our laws, it should be handled as a state. I don't want to have no a federal, federal police force. Then why'd, you, uh, why'd you sign this thing? The personhood Republican candidate pledge, every, this is something you signed on to, every human being at every stage of development must be recognized as a person possessing the right to life in federal and state laws without exception, without compromise. You signed on. Yeah, but you have to read my disclaimer. I read your disclaimer. Yeah. But why would you sign it at all on something so serious? Well, because I wanted to indicate my position on that, but I wanted to, you know, explain it too. And I've done this a lot of times on a lot of the right to work uh, questionnaires. I'll go down, I'll get eight out of 10, but I sign it. But I say, these two, I disagree with you on it because it's not a federal issue. It's just a way of, of doing it. It's not like I have to vote up or down on a law. It's a, it's a questionnaire, so I clarify it, try to teach people about the Constitution and, and my position exactly. One of the uh, issues that Romney's having to deal a lot with these days is his uh, term at uh, Bain Capital. Uh, he says the other night, I think it was the other night, as opposed to the morning, I'm sure you're as confused what was night and morning as I am. I think it was night. He said uh, 100,000 net jobs uh, I've created, and he's tried to supply some numbers later. Newt Gingrich in the last 24 hours is focused on this Illinois medical device company. $30 million investment turned into $240 million in profit. 1,700 layoffs. He thinks it's abominable. Which side are you on in terms of this? I have are you on the Newt side or are you on the <laughs> Mid side? Probably, probably neither, but I, I certainly don't seem to be invited in, in the Newt side because it's not like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac getting taxpayers' money. He hasn't charged uh, Romney with taking a bailout money. See, I would want this argument about the money that went to General Motors and that the uh, labor unions got preference and they now own that company. That's the kind of corruption you want to but deal with. But are you troubled as a human being? Forget as a presidential candidate and potentially a president. Are you troubled by a guy who uh, uh, multiplies his investment eightfold and in the process lays off, lays off 1,700 if people? He, doesn't if bother? He's done, if he's you done have a bully pulpit as president, no? If he's done nothing illegal, this type of activity may have saved jobs because if you have a company that's Thank ready to go you, bust Senator and he President. saves up it and, and I don't know anything about his dealings because I haven't had that interest but if you save a company and move it out and you have jobs here growing otherwise maybe that company would go broke and they would all lose jobs so the market sources out the bureaucrats shouldn't do it it shouldn't be the politician who bails out General Motors and Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and all the banks that's where the real corruption is. Are you skipping Florida? Not exactly, but I'm what not. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to do some, but I'm not going to do a whole lot. Why? Yet. Well, because of uh, I'm looking for delegates, and they've already lost half their delegates. You know, because they didn't of follow they did the rules. They lost right. half their delegates. Still and 50 delegates. I mean, yeah, roughly winter, as many as winter, Iowa and New it's Hampshire. It's winner take all. Yeah. So you have to have uh, multi box. You have to be uh, tied into uh, Wall Street. And you know, I think I read today where Romney got more money than anybody else from Goldman Sachs. I, I don't want their money. I wouldn't take their money. I don't have a hundred million dollars. So I'm not going to go down there and think I can compete with against Wall Street on a statewide where they're all going to get the same, where, where winner takes all. We only so, have 15 seconds left. One last question. I just met your wife out in the hall. You were kind enough to introduce me. When you go home or go to your hotel room, lock the doors, just the two of you. Do you say to her, I'm going to be president of the United States? No, but I never say I'm not going to be president <laughs> of the United States. Uh, Congressman. Matter of fact, she's more likely to say he is going to be president of the United we'll, States. We'll take her next time. Uh, Congressman Paul, thank you so much.